memorial to those who perished. My Lords, I would like to acknowledge the noble Lord, Lord Pickles, and his lifetime of devotion uh, to this cause. And I will also go down the road, opened up by Lord, my noble friend, Lord Keston Bowman, talking more personally about this. Um, I spent the, all of August in Ukraine, um, moving through Ukraine. I travelled from Kiev um, all the way down to Odessa, and it, it brought home to me the reality of genocide. I was treated extremely well by my Ukrainian host. I was invited to the Cathedral of St. Michael for the, for the Mass of St. Barbara. I was invited into the Cathedral in Odessa to, to observe the Mass, and these were full. But all the way down, even in Zhitomy, even in Odessa, which in 1941 was almost 50% Jewish, the synagogues were closed. There was no one there. Um, President Putin says that the goal of the war is denazification. I would say that the footnote and a small footnote of the war is that it is the end of the Jewish community in Ukraine. They have left, it is abandoned. A community that in 1941 was more than two million, that gave us Jabotinsky, that gave us Leon Trotsky, <laughs> that, that gave us Isaac Babel, that gave us the Baal Shem Tov, an incredible center of Jewish civilization is decimated. Um, and it's gone. And I just wanted to say that that's the reality of the Holocaust. That's the reality. It's real. And there are now no longer any Jews in Ukraine on Friday night. When I was in Odessa on Friday night, I went to the synagogue and a man just stood there and he just said to me, all gone, Jews all gone. That's the reality of, of, what, we, of what we are looking at. And I witnessed some extraordinary things in, in, in Ukraine when I was there. Um, not least that the majority of the soldiers who were fighting uh, for the freedom of Ukraine and the sovereignty of Ukraine um, were Russian-speaking. And to just develop this point, and I would like the, uh, the noble minister to, to take note of this, um, Lord Pickles said in his opening remarks that there was a rinsing of reputations. And I just want to raise this issue because the dead, they scream at me because when I'm there, it's not the dead that I miss, it's those who were not born. I go and I have no family to visit. I go and I have no people to welcome me. The ghosts of the unborn are alive and the abandonment and the fate of my people is clear. And what really disturbed me when I was in Ukraine was the restoration of the reputation of Stepan Bandera. Wherever I went in the small towns, his image was there. When I met soldiers, they had portraits of him. He even appeared on the arm. Now, Bandera was an ally of Hitler, and Bandera was an active proponent um, of the ONU and the UAP. And we should remember that between 41 and 43, there was no Auschwitz, there was no industrial slaughter. This was all done by hand. The decimation of Ukrainian Jewry was done by ordinary people, two ordinary people. In my grandfather's village where he was born in his shtetl, they were just slaughtered. In Odessa, they were taken into the main square and they were slaughtered. In uh, Babi Yar, we should remember, a hundred at a time into the pit, all slaughtered in an alliance between the Einsatz group and the, the German Nazi group and local Ukrainian groups. And Vandera was a central part of that. So I really do urge the minister, I absolutely support Ukraine. I went to Ukraine to show my solidarity with the people of Ukraine against this invasion but they created Bandera as a national holiday, his birthday as a national holiday, and that was only last week. So I please say that in this war, we absolutely support Ukraine, but we must also resolutely oppose any rehabilitation of, of the murderers and the perpetrators of the Holocaust. Very good. Very good. Terrific.